guys have girl problems and when I ask most guys why do they have the girl problems, basically I ask a bunch of questions. And the number one root cause from 99%, of, not 99, but like majority. the overall majority, like 80, 90% is they don't source. They don't have anything coming in to their lead funnel. So it's like, oh, I want to get laid. Okay. Um, how many girls did you talk to today? Uh, zero. What do you expect? And then they wonder why there's no results. Um, so you guys, we did a course back in the day, the on Demand, which might be coming up pretty soon. Who knows? But in essence, we brought you through the new way to get girls, which is online game in detail for Instagram. Now, there's many others you can do, um, but Mario, you said back in the day, cold approach. Yeah. Uh, can you tell them how important it is to do that now versus back in the day? Because nowadays, it's hardly ever a thing being done. Yeah, the pandemic made a lot of people comfortable with online dating and kind of just being uh, sitting from home. Yeah. I do think that cold approach is still one of the best ways to um, collect leads. You know, obviously I can't do it as much now, given you, well, you know, are. the, yeah, it's fucking, you know, oh, I know you are, you the asshole, it's like, bro. So, um, it's not the clout that you guys think. <laughs> like, oh, I was, but this is like the worst kind of clout you get. You racist, you know, that type of shit. It doesn't help. Uh, but it does help you find base girls, I'll say that. Because like, you, when if you're polarizing, like only girls that kind of have your worldview, like will be attractive, which is kind of good. But, um, but in general, guys, cold approach is, you know, the first the most tried and true method and it simply works and I would argue after the pandemic it's actually a better time to do it because those four years locked indoors actually made a lot of people socially inept so you getting out there and talking to girls in public again or like you know doing cold approaches is kind of novel now let me be clear about this guys <laughs> going up to a girl in a loud noisy fucking nightclub and saying hey yo what's your number like that's not a, a real cold approach guys I'm talking about making a legit valid approach at a time where it's almost how do i say this it's not like a environment conducive to hooking up does that make sense guys so like yeah. for example you're at the grocery store see a girl clearly she had just finished working out getting some food oh i like that brand of strawberries too but this one's better and you show her another one right so you've done a couple things by doing that you're displaying awareness you're displaying competence you're displaying that you're also fit similar interests etc right especially if you're you know in good shape um, now, what you've done is you've taken a venue that is normally used for procuring sustenance, and now you're pretty much spinning the sustenance to the girl, if you guys know what I'm saying. So you've been able to take a routine situation and make it novel to her. And I don't think enough guys understand how important it is for how you meet, yeah. right? A lot of girls want to be able to go to their friends and say, oh, how'd you meet him? Oh, I met him, you know, like on some fairy tale shit. I was in a bookstore and I walked into him and the books fell down and he just picked them up for me and he was just so charming. Like girls like that story. So if you can be something close to that, though it's scary at first, don't get it twisted. It's not easy to be in a grocery store and just hit on random girls. Like yeah. it's tough. But if you're able to like kind of build attraction there, it's going to go a long ways because she's going to value that interaction more guys. Okay. Anyone that does night game or goes to the club, you guys all know this shit. I used to have a rule. I talked to at least 30, 40 girls a night at the club. Why? Because I know 90% of those phone numbers that I collect are going to flake. Yeah. Me and a girl in a nightclub where there's alcohol, it's dark, you know, things are random, blah, blah, blah. Like, if you don't close that night, there's going to be a very low likelihood that she's actually going to show up on a, a follow date. follow-up, yeah. Right? So, but if you meet a girl at, like, a grocery store or somewhere natural and you set something up, that'll be a lot more potent because she'll remember it, it's, uh, it's novel, and it'll work better. And you met her in a high-value way. You mentioned cold approach at different locations, Right. Guys, it's a numbers game, man. And I'll give you this. Even myself as well, when I first came to America, I would go to sometimes lounges and bars and clubs. And you guys know I had a terrible stutter back in the day, even worse than now. And it was more like, okay, I can talk to 10 girls. I'm going to stutter on three. The last seven I might pull through. I make it happen. But it took practice. And I'm more so like practice over a period of time. Granted, though, I have a video I want to play for you guys real quick. And when you don't practice talking to girls or people in general, you kind of cram up a lot of times, especially if you're like someone like me or, or like myself. And what happens is you actually become this person in the video in real time. Play real quick. <laughs> this is your gym crush talking to you for the first time. Uh, this guy's funny. Yeah. Oh, you seen his videos? Uh, yeah, that's the guy that brought on, right? Nah, nah. This is oh, he guy. looks like. Oh shit. It's okay. Similar. He plays one. Oh my gosh. Hey. Hey. I, oh, I, okay. I, 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 okay. One more time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hey. Hey, I, 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 I. <laughs> So the point is, is that like, 
First, is that you, your cousin, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it might as well be. But this is the point, though, guys. The more you can practice cold approach, talking to people in general, and there's a rule that we used to do back in the day. Mm -hmm. If you want to get your, I want to say, mindset off of being nervous or being cramped up at the very beginning, talk to somebody at least once a day. Now, if yeah. you can, 10 a day is perfect. Could be anywhere. But any, anytime you're out, talk about something indirectly. Maybe, for example, oh, man, uh, it's about to rain, brother. You know, where you're from. Just whatever you can do to spark a conversation, you want to start off with. Now. Yeah, I did that. Like, when I had, like, approach anxiety. Yeah. Like, doing that, guys, will make you, like, and you, it doesn't have to be all girls. But, yeah. like, you could just, like, do it to practice. Like, hey, thought you were, you're cute. Just want to make your day. See where that goes. Even you just giving a compliment and sometimes. And walk away. And, uh, will work now i know some of you guys well that's being simpish guys remember this is just for guys out there that have approach anxiety right mm -hmm. so you got to learn to crawl before you sprint right so once you're able to kind of just open and give out a compliment you'll get better at maybe not giving up a compliment or giving a backhanded compliment and building attraction that way but you got to start somewhere for most guys they have hell like fucking damn near crippling levels of anxiety when they talk to girls. So I'm not going to tell a guy like that, yeah, just go up to her and start like negging her and use a canned opener and be indirect. Like, nah, bro. Like a lot of guys are starting in square fucking one. So they just got to be able to go up and say hello. Hey, I thought you looked really nice today. Simple. You know, rest in peace to Tom Terrell. He used to talk about this a lot where you come in and you almost kind of, you give a compliment, but the reason why you're giving that compliment is to make the interaction man to woman immediately. Yeah. It's not necessarily to raise... The, to you know try to sway the girl it's to make the interaction man to woman immediately and then based off of you giving her that compliment the way she responds to it is going to kind of dictate how you move from there 100 percent. because half the game is screening out women guys fyi cold approach you, you guys y'all are gonna if you guys close 10 percent of the girls you talk to on cold approach you're a fucking god by the way so when you approach a girl you want to look at her body and see if like th is this even worth it because that will tell you a lot that's another beauty of doing uh cold approaches you can see real-time feedback also, nowadays, you mentioned earlier, uh, after uh, the bear bug, most people don't are not approached anymore. For example, guys don't approach girls. And it's because either they're scared of the Me Too, which I understand 100%, or they're like, you know what? I'm going to get rejected. I'm good. So they'll send a DM on Instagram, to say the least. Now, if you have the balls to actually approach a girl in real life, and you can talk smoothly, you're not worried, you're not nervous, you're not like crackling it up, then you just be out. I would say a majority, guys. In, 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 in the first place. Just by now, approaching. But you approach her when most people wouldn't. And nightclubs don't count, guys. FYI. Yeah. Like, making, like, you know, f I would argue making, like, 50 approaches in a nightclub is, like, the equivalent to, like, maybe five daytime approaches. Bro, like, you know what it is with a nightclub? It is super easy with a table. Without a table, you might as well just, just give up. It'll, it'll be, you, might get a, you might get a shot or two, yeah. but to be honest, I'll, I'll give you an example. Oh, you get, you, okay, keep yeah. going, because you just brought something up so, very important. You're at a nightclub, right? You get a table. Let's say you're in Vendome. One of the best clubs I think in Miami, personally. You get a table at Vendom, right? There's girls all the way in the middle and outside tables at all times. So you, as a guy on the table, you could be like, yo, security, bring her, her, her in. He'd be like, yo, he wants you over here. And just by, just by you saying that, they come to your section. Now, you might have like five to ten girls in your section just for being there at, with a table. So you could talk to them, get them, them shots, and it's super easy in that, in that environment. However... They may use, use you for drinks if you have no game. They may just like use you for photos. Hey, I got a, I got a bottle of club. And before you know it, they're gone to the next club. This is why you need game all in all. But in that environment, just them coming to you is easy because you're the one at the table. So it's, yeah. not, it's not real life. And I also want to bring attention to this. I talked about this on, we've been talking about this for years, but again, new viewers and shit like that. Yeah. The killer of the nightlife industry, guys, was the uh, two things killed nightlife. The smartphone and bottle service. Celebrities too. Yeah. So, well, celebs, of course, too, because Instagram made bottle it more service. reachable. But like, yeah. But bottle service absolutely is one of the main killers of night game because now, since women are higher, uh, uh, how do I say, hierarchy based when it comes to being attracted to men, guys, when they um, go into a club and they see that there's men there of status via a table, they're naturally going to want to go to those guys at the table right it's like their natural inclination so let's say you're like a smv9 right attractive guy dressed fairly well high smv right though you're aesthetically pleasing pause you might lose a girl to a dude that has a table that's a four yeah because good point yeah see where i'm going here yeah because that guy is able to show status and whenever 
And this is, guys, this is like very, I'm, I'm getting in the weeds here, but I really want you guys to fucking burn this in your heads. Status is by far the number one amplifier. Yeah. So since status is by far the number one amplifier, overlooks guys that are half your fucking SMV can pull a girl to their section, have almost no game, and have damn near a shot as you. That's how powerful status is, guys. Right? And look, I get it. Yo, that sucks. That's not fair. But this is just how women are. And what uh, bottle service has effectively been able to do, it's allowed women to be concentrated in one area and all, like, few guys have all the women, which is how it's been for centuries. The nightclub is nothing more than a natural manifestation of human mating dynamics in a very primitive format with some fucking techno music. That's what a nightclub is, guys, and yeah. ain't nobody gonna tell you that in the fucking nightlife industry. They want you to think you're gonna go in there and have a chance. They want you to think women are there to actually socialize. They want you to think women will put their phone away and give you their unyielding you know, attention and wanna go home with you after. But the reality is, girls are going in there, seeing who they could finesse, who they can get free drinks from, like you had said before, like you get them at the table, but you gotta be vigilant. Who can they sit in whose section because they got heels and they want to be able to sit down and be comfortable? All these little things, guys, come into play, right? And it's your job as the man to identify the women that are looking for a benefit that doesn't benefit you and kick them out of your section immediately if you're going to do that. Yeah. So Also, back in the day, clubs were more focused on cover. For example, guys paying cover, then buying drinks in the club, point. and girls will be in there from the jump. And to bottle service now, what do they focus on? Getting tables for bottles. And they put a minimum. You got to spend maybe like 2K. You get, might get a bottle or two. And that's how you get into the club. Girls get it for free, of, of course. But for you as, as a guy, it doesn't work that way. So and by default, now think about it. If guys could come to the club for free or pay a cover and get girls, why would they get a section? Why would they get a bottle? Because they know once you get a bottle or section, girls will come to you because you're the guy with the status like you said before. And you could be a four. You could be a five. You could be a three. Doesn't matter if you're guy with the table, you got a status in that club. So Bro. for that night, you're the, you're the actual celebrity that night. Yep, yep. And 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 the thing is, this guys like, I don't be very clear about this. I know some of you guys are like Myron Fresh. That's bullshit. I'm a nine. I do well. Blah blah blah. That's cool. But <laughs> you don't know what you lose because you don't know what you lose. And what I mean by this is, there's girls there that you could have probably had an opportunity to talk to that you're not even going to get the chance to now. Because there's a table that has her there. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So you're, unbeknownst to you, when you walk in that club and you don't have a section, you've already forfeited half of your leads. I want to make that abundantly clear for you guys. And these losers, these guys that are half your sexual market value, now have access to women that you won't. It's like, you know how they say, um, you know, don't waste food. There's people starving out there, right? If you live in a privileged first world country. That's literally what it's like at the nightclub. They have an abundance of food. Yeah. The food that you guys got is scarce, and they're just wasting it away because they have so much of it. And they might not even eat it. They might have a beautiful sandwich right next to them. But they took her because she came with three other girls, and those other girls want to be in that section. So now you lose access to that girl who was never going to fuck with any of these guys anyway, but he just put her in the right position. Now you've lost access. I'll give, I'll give a perfect example. So we were at a club uh, when Trump won that week. And we were celebrating, we did a Trump sign, all that stuff. And one of my friends is a major player in the Miami nightlife, RT. He's one of the guys that bend down. His table is usually between 10 to 15 girls all, all the time, right? But what happened was, I know a guy that came to the club with four girls from uh, Sweden and Norway. Two girls each, right? So two and two. He's by the bar, chilling. Now, I know the guy, I dap him up, right? And he's with the girls. So I'm in a section, he's, he's walking with the girls right here. So I'm, imagine I'm in a section. He's on the side, dot me up. Now the girls see the section and they see RT, and he's like, "Yo, come through." He didn't know that. Raj RT. tipped one hundred dollars. No. Hey F dollar F, thank you for all the value that you provide. Two questions. First, are you guys gonna do more couple intervention show? Second, Myron, do you still do one on one sessions? Um, yeah. So uh, actually, you know, thanks for we know we need to talk, let's talk with Icy about the intervention thing. <laughs> Yeah, people do like it. So thank you for reminding me on that. As far as one-on-one -on -one sessions, I do. Um, but I'm not going to lie to you, bro. It's cheap. Uh, I said cheap. It's not cheap. So you can send me a DM. Myron Gaines X is my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, you know, just send me a DM. Say take co say console in all caps because I got to sift through it, bro. I got so many fucking Shaniquas sending me death threats right now. So a lot. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's 
Man. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. But um, but yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's 100 bucks. Okay, shout out to you. No worries. Yeah, um, but we're, we're going to work on that couple's uh, interventions. So soon. going back to your story. So yeah. it's, paint the picture. You're there. The squad's there. Yeah. So, uh, so promoter, you're, that you're pro- there with a big promoter. Yeah, so it's me, RT, some other, gr- some, some other like 10, 15 girls, and then it's that he brought. two other guys that he knows, right? Okay. So he's like, yo, come to the section, right? And Dick, mind you, they're with the guy that I know. Tap him up, and he's just standing there. They come into the section and leave him. Oh, okay. Okay. No, he has to stand on, on, outside by himself, and it's like, you know. Um, so I'm just saying. Why did RT let that guy in? Because uh, unless he knows you, there's there's no point. For example, let's say I'm with people and I want to bring them with me. Mm-hmm. I got to show love and get a bar or something. Because imagine, he's there to make the club look amazing. Yeah. And he, he, dude, he pulls like 10 to 15 girls a night, every single night. Okay. So for him, it's like, this is work. It's not play thing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that's why I get it. Um, so he but, don't want no random dude in plus, there. I don't know him that well. It's like somebody I, I, I see, oh, what's up, brother? Okay. You know okay. So, But the point is that like they left his ass for the table. Now, I don't know how close he was to them or what, but either way, they left immediately. Yeah. Go, which proves your point that it doesn't yeah. matter if you're the nine. With, with that status of, of the table, you lose. Yeah. So, by default.